Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, February 13th, 2024. Let's get into it. So the first thing was that uh, Biden says we're going to fund NATO no matter what. There is no European country that needs to contribute a damn thing to NATO uh, because if you've been watching the news, because Trump came out and he said, well, they need to pay. They need to pay their fair share to NATO. So Biden says, oh, hell no. The United States taxpayer is going to pay everything for NATO and, and Germany, uh, Italy, you know, uh, France. I mean, they don't need to pay a damn thing. The U.S. taxpayer is going to pay everything for NATO. So that was the first thing that, that was on my list here. So, uh, and then, of course, you know, we had this incredibly stupid bill that came up. And, it, it, you know, isn't it amazing how we want to fund every country in the world, like Ukraine, Israel, uh, Taiwan, but we don't want to give shit to the American people? I mean, I, I don't understand the Democrats. Somebody explain the Democrats to me. Why do we want to give all our money away, our taxpayer dollars? And by the way, I, 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 we're approaching $35 trillion in debt. How long do you think this is this this incredibly stupid systems this debt based system is going to last? I mean, I hope, I hope, and I always tell you, you know, I hope you're buying some precious metals. I hope you're you're having a garden in your backyard. I hope you you are preparing because this. I mean, it was it was kind of like I was going back, you know. And of course, I've been doing videos about my history. And I remember, you know, being in the government offices back in, God knows, I guess it was the, the 80s, well, it was in the 90s. It was in the 90s, and everybody had their feet propped up on the desk, and they were reading newspapers, and I thought, how long can this system last? Well, it lasted a hell of a lot longer than I ever dreamed possible. I mean, we, here we are in 2024, and of course, I mean... I remember we were billions of dollars in debt, and I thought, oh, this whole damn system, this debt-based system is going to collapse. Oh, no, we, we've made it to 30, well, we're get, approaching $35 trillion in debt. By the way, the dog's gone. I know that everybody likes the dog. Uh, he's back with the uh, the old battle axe, my ex-wife. So, uh, uh, Russia is armed. Oh, yeah. I mean, how stupid is this? Russia, is, well, I mean, if you, if you go back in the news, and this is how crazy people are, because, I mean, even today I met with my ex-wife, and I'm, I'm going to get into that story, but the, 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 the story was that, that Russia was just a gas station, uh, they didn't have the army to, to fight Ukraine, and that if we provided Ukraine with uh, weapons that uh, Russia wouldn't stand a chance and we were going to sanction Russia and then we were going to go in and steal all the resources. And, and so that was the original story. And so now the story is Russia's going to conquer all of Europe. <laughs> I mean, they're going to invade Poland. I mean, they're, they're going to sweep through and conquer the whole damn world. I, I guess we might see, uh, like Red Dawn, we're going to see Russian troops pouring across the uh, the Mexican and Canadian borders into the United States. I, you know, I, do you see how the narrative changes within the news? I mean, I I, I just can't believe that people just kind of like just flow with it. You know, it's all it's all cool, it's all good. So, uh, by the way, I, I I will tell you this, and you hear. Uh, the neocons, you know, like Lindsey Graham or uh, uh, Jack Con Con Jack Keen or Kellogg, that stupid idiot general. I mean, I mean, who in the hell are these people? I mean, how in the hell did they achieve the ranks that they did? But anyway, uh, they're saying that you know uh, that we got to bomb Iran. We got to bomb, 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 bomb Iran. Bomb, 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 bomb Iran. If you understand that if we bomb Iran. We are going to see 57,000 dead Americans in the Middle East. No way. I mean, and, and by the way, I mean, we're going to get into the story, but uh, all right. So because we just killed an Iraqi leader. I, oh, God. Let, let, let's just let's just keep going. So uh, 
the end of Israel as Muslims unite against them. And that was a that's a footnote that I have. Do you think, I mean, if Israel attacks Hezbollah in the north, and uh, they've already, uh, you know, of course, they're fighting Hamas in Gaza and, and exterminating him. I, I, I have broke down the number. What are we up to now? I mean, it, it's like 13,000 dead children. If you're a Christian, if you're somebody out there, that has any sense of humanity, why would you want 13,000 dead kids in Gaza? And why would you support that? These are the Democrats. The Democrats. The Democrats. Oh, don't get me started. How in the hell can you support the extermination of the Palestinian people? 13,000 dead children. What the hell is wrong with these people? I, I don't know, man, man. Have we been taken over by some sort of type of satanic government? I mean, is that where we are? We're providing the bombs to Israel to kill all of these people? I mean, we're going to exterminate. And, and of course, now they're bombing them. I mean, and what the Israelis did, they actually took the Gazans or the, uh, the Palestinians and they told them to go to safe places. And as they congregated them in greater numbers, now they dropped 2,000 pound bombs on them. What the hell is wrong with the American people? Why aren't we rising up and protesting about this? Oh, don't get me started. Anyway, I'm just saying that the end of Israel is, is coming. I mean, there's no way you exterminate 2 million people and that the Muslim nations, the Arab people, especially, I mean, when you think about what's taking place down in Yemen and taking place in other places uh, in the Middle East, that eventually it's just going to be too much. And now they're, they're trying to, they're, they're actually fighting with Egypt in a certain kind of way. And do you think that these U.S. installed governments in Egypt and these uh, other Arab nations are going to be able to survive when their entire populace is enraged against the extermination of the Palestinians? I mean, when you exterminate two million people, do you think, especially in the Middle East, these are Muslims, okay, and, and I understand a lot of the Arab nations, they don't like the Palestinians, but they still consider them of a similar faith. I'm just telling you, I just think this thing is going to blow up. I just think it's going to blow up. And so here's, here's an example for you of how crazy the world is. So today I had to give the dog back to my ex-wife. She's a liberal lunatic. And, uh, and so I, I told her, she goes, well, didn't you enjoy the Super Bowl? I said, well, I chose not to watch it because of the Black National Anthem. She goes, what are you talking about? What Black National Anthem? I said, well, they played the Black National Anthem at the beginning. I said, I, there's no way that I'm going to watch this woke fucking NFL institution that, you know, plays a, a, you know, a divisive thing. I mean, we are one country. We are one nation. Our country, our choice. If you want to join them, I highly encourage you to do that, uh, led by Colonel Douglas McGregor. But I'm going to tell you right now, I mean, if you're going to play a racially divisive, divisive and, and they call it, I mean, it's just a freaking song. You know, I'm sorry. I got nothing against black people. I got nothing against Mexicans. In fact, you know, obviously, I employ Mexicans. They're one of my they're my best friends. Black people are my best friends. Do you think that we would need a black national national anthem and we need it played at the Super Bowl? I turned the TV off right there. I was done. I no way I was going to watch the Super Bowl. But anyway, just just telling you that because and the only reason that I'm talking about this is because my ex liberal wife didn't even know that they played the black national anthem. And then she says, well, I'm full of hatred. Because <laughs> I got a text message from her because I had to give the dog back her to her today. This is how liberals are. These leftist lunatics. All right, so let me, let me keep going. So we know that the, the spider, I called her the spider, Victoria Newland visited Ukraine. But I think she's done. I think her influence over the situation is pretty much done. Uh, so we're going to keep going. But I and, and, and like I talked about, I mean, the Middle East, if you didn't know, is about to explode. I mean, there's no way we killed, the U.S. killed the senior leader in Baghdad. 
in Baghdad. Imagine if Iran killed Joe Biden or Donald Trump or whoever you want to talk about, a U.S. senator in Washington, D.C., do you think that we wouldn't be going to go to war? <laughs> I mean, come on. What the hell? I mean, I, I always try to, you know, and everybody said I have no empathy. I can't put myself, I mean, put yourself in the, the shoes of the other people. I mean, this guy, he was uh, the head of the Khatib Hezbollah. And by the way, uh, from what I've been able to determine, he was trying to de-escalate things. He was actually trying to say, don't bomb uh, the U.S. troops because his militia was obviously attacking the U.S. bases uh, with, I mean, a, a substantial number of attacks, 165 times that they launched the stuff in there. So here's the guy trying to de-escalate things. We bomb him in Baghdad and kill him to escalate things. Don't tell me the United States doesn't want regional war in the Middle East. I guess we're going to see the Biden administration as a war presidency. I get, what are they going to do? Declare martial law so that Donald Trump doesn't get elected? That seems to me where, where we're headed. So holy shit. So then the U.S. has 900 troops. We have 900 troops in Syria and 2,500 in Iraq. You think they're going to survive? I don't think so. I think they're all dead. I, I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be over there right now. Uh, so anyway, and of course, up in Ukraine, we know that Avdivka is fallen. And, and, and by the way, uh, with the new general, if you didn't follow geopolitics, uh, Zaluzhny is out. Uh, Zelensky has appointed a new general. Uh, I can't remember. It starts with an S, Leaps. And uh, he's... He's commanding the troops now, and of course, he all he does is butcher his troops. They don't want to follow him. Uh, and of course, Ukraine is dragging women and, and everybody. I mean, if there's video after video of them uh, kidnapping people off the streets. And then, by the way, the Ukrainians, I give them credit, man. Some of them are fighting back. They're, you know, they're, they're beating up these guys trying to pull uh, their, their, their husbands and the, and the women off the streets to send them to the front lines. I mean, it's like Germany, Nazi Germany in, in 1945 or 44. I mean, it's, 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 it's happening all over again. It's cause I, what I, well, here's my note. Ukraine mobilized women. Video shows them trying to drag people off the streets. So, uh, you know, I had a comment. I met with a very influential person uh, recently, and I've been talking about an upcoming interview. And I... Uh, I, I just told him, I said, that interview with uh, Tucker Carlson was, was huge. And uh, I said, man, Putin is one smart dude. That's kind of how I put it. Because, you know, I'm, I'm not the smartest tool in the shed. And uh, he said, well, uh, Putin, you know, he's, he's been in power for 20 years. He said, you don't stay in that type of position just like Xi commanding a, a nation of, of 300 million people or gee, a billion people unless you're a very intelligent person. And I, I was like, well, you know, yeah, I guess I guess you got a good point. He says, well, our American presidents, they only serve four years. And, uh, you know, they obviously they get elected uh, not uh, for the American people, but not for their intelligence. It's just because of their, their, their uh, donor backing. And uh, the globalists that, that put them in power. I, so I was like, wow, you know, I, you know, it's kind of an enlightening conversation. So Putin is smart. Uh, whether you want to hate him or love him, he's a smart dude, man. And uh, so we're going to get into, uh, well, uh, of course, then there was Trump's comment. <laughs> Let Russia do what the hell they want. Uh and, uh, I, I, you know, everybody takes that in the wrong way. I mean, Putin, I mean, Trump, you know, he's just boastering stuff. So we're going to get into uh, my bookmarks. Uh, so, uh, boy, I tell you, this is going to kind of be a long video because I haven't made a watching the world burn video for a while. So uh, this is uh, Empire of Lies on, uh, on Twitter or X. I'm sorry, X. This is not war. This is not self-defense. This is cold-blooded murder of children, not minors. And this is what I was telling you. Breaking health officials say that more than 12,000, 12,300 Palestinian minors have been killed 
in Israel's war on Hamas in Gaza. All right, so that's the first one. Uh, and, that, and, that, and that, how in the hell are the American people putting up with this? The Democrats, the bloodthirsty, warmongering Democrats. I mean, why in the hell do you, if you're a Democrat, tell me, why do you want 12,300 dead children? Somebody somewhere explain this to me. What the freak is wrong with you? Do you have kids? If you're a Democrat and you got kids, you explain this to me. I want a comment. I want a comment from anybody telling me how 12,300 dead kids is a good idea that the American, the Biden, the Democrats, the warmongering, bloodthirsty Democrats are doing. All right, so let's get into the next uh, uh, one here. The Russian army created a Tsar, and this was, this was very interesting because I don't even understand how this is a, you know, maybe somebody who's out there is a military genius. The Russian army created a Tsar, T-S-A-R, train of 12,000, or 2,000, excuse me, cars, 30 kilometers long in Donbass. It is actually a mobile line of defense, right? The DS analytical source writing for the armed surface of Ukraine, a continuous structure of freight cars stretches along the line from the railway station, and I, I can't pronounce this, Yell, Yella Novaska, and also about 2,100 cars of various types. The construction of this, this carriage, Centipede, began in uh, July of 2023. The message says, the super train can be considered as a separate line of defense since it is extremely difficult to damage, move, or explode a 30-kilometer mass of metal and the advancement of equipment due to such an obstacle is in impossible without breaking through the car to according to the DS. So my, my question is, well, it seems to me if you bomb the train, because <laughs> you know, the Ukrainians still have artillery and stuff. So now, you know, you got this. Uh, and also you can you can crawl under a train. You can, you know, it's it's not like a, you know, a huge. I mean, like, you know, if we look at the Texas border, they've been putting the uh, cargo containers as border fence down there. Uh, but, you know, still you can get, you can, you know, with a ladder, you can get over it and stuff. I mean, it it's an obstacle, but I don't see how this train really makes a difference, but I guess it does. So we're going to get into the next one here. Breaking bill that includes, here's what I was talking about. The Democrats, the Democrats uh, includes $95 billion in aid for Ukraine. Taiwan and Israel has enough to support the advance in the U.S. Senate. The U.S. Senate was meeting in a rare Sunday session debating a 900, 900, I mean, I mean, excuse me, a $95 billion package for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. The Senate Democrat Majority Leader, of course, Chuck Schumer, well, who in the hell votes for this guy? What is wrong with these people? Chuck Schumer and the lawmakers in the chamber say, say in session, until the job is done, Although extra televisions have been brought in near the chamber and the legislatures want to. So my question is, as a Democrat, explain to me, why do you want $95 billion going to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan when you have homeless people living on your streets, you got crime in your cities, uh, your states are disintegrating? Somebody explain this to me. Please, God, explain this to me. All right, so that's that was the next one. Uh, you know what? I guess I'm just going to stop the video right there because I'll get into these. Uh, analysis, dislike of Russia, February 11, 2024. And uh, boy, I tell you, these, these are some long, <laughs> some, some long ex posts. But I think I've gone on long enough for my next uh, Watching the World Burn video. Now, as you know, I've been doing a series of videos talking about my background on how I am qualified to write the greatest book on cybersecurity in human history for small business and home computing. This is The Internet is Infected. I've got a big interview coming up. I just want to keep promoting that. This is my one shot. I mean, it's kind of like that, that remember the, oh God, I can't remember the artist. This is my one shot then, you know. To, to, to make the big time. Anyway, peace out and stay free. 
You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.